Hi everyone, I'm Zenzo with Aquarium Co-op and I have my colleague Irene with us today. And Irene keeps uh, mostly smaller aquariums and I have larger and smaller aquariums, but there's one thing that is common, whether you have a large tank or a small tank, and that is you can keep nano fish in them. So today we're gonna go over some of our favorite nano fish that can be on the surface, middle of the tank, bottom dwellers, and some other cool things. So we're gonna kick off this topic with our favorite nano life bear. Now I'm gonna start with guppies. I I love guppies. They're a wonderful fish that are very easy to keep. And because they are a live bear, you're going to get lots more. I would recommend starting off with a small group of maybe one or two males and anywhere from two to four females. That way you'll have more males and females so that the females kind of get a break from having to do a lot of breeding. And you have wonderful colors. They're very hardy. You can keep them on lots of different water parameters and they're just a very fun, easy fish to keep. Irene, what do you think is your favorite uh, nano live bear? You are gonna laugh, but I actually don't like guppies very much. And I actually prefer <laughs> <All right. laughs> live bears, totally. I like the smaller form factor. They definitely are smaller than guppies, even though they're closely related and they can hybridize with each other. Because of the smaller size, they can go into smaller tanks. I just find that I really like their live and they're very colorful even just naturally. They do breed very readily. They tend to like harder water with more minerals in it, but I've always enjoyed just how energetic they are. And so that's my favorite in Lures Like Bears. The next thing on our list is our favorite nano bottom dweller. I'm gonna start off with Pygmy Corydora because Pygmy Corydora are wonderful little fish that will kind of school and swim along the bottom of the tank. If you get a group of like five or six, they'll kind of swim and follow each other around the tank, dart up and down when they're um, going up to the surface. Sometimes they'll do that. And they're a great kind of fish is going to help keep the bottom of your aquarium clean. So as you're feeding your aquarium and if any food kind of makes it down to the bottom, they're a great fish to have. Now it is important to make sure that if you do keep Corydora that you don't just rely on the food falling down and that you also target feed them to make sure that they get plenty of nutrients. So Irene, hopefully I didn't steal your idea, but what is your favorite uh, nano <laughs> yeah. bottom dweller? I actually was gonna say pygmy quarries, but I'm gonna pick another good one, which is the rosy loach. And what I really like about them is, I just love loaches in general. They tend to be a really exciting, boisterous in uh, their personality, but these are pretty peaceful. They do great in community tanks. And then I also like how the males and females are different colors. The males have more of that rosy uh, color that's in their name, versus the females are more of like a tannish golden yellow kind of color with spots on them. So you're, it's like you're getting two fish for the price of one. So get a little school of them. They're definitely gonna keep you very entertained even in a nano aquarium and keep that bottom level of the uh, tank very busy. Okay, so since we just talked about bottom dwellers, Zenzo, what about surface dwellers? What do you think about top dwelling fish that can fit in a nano tank? Yeah, so this is a fish I've actually kept before and that's the clown killifish. The clown killifish, sometimes called like the rocket killifish and there's some other names for them, but they are amazing, beautiful, and very much top dwelling fish. Now the only challenge that I've had with the clown killies is they tend to be very good escape artists. So you gotta have a very well fitted lid and you can't have any gaps or anything because for some reason they'll find a way out of that little crack at the top of the tank. So you wanna make sure that you have a very well fitted lid, but they're beautiful, they're small. Um, I've seen them spawn in tanks before. They don't live very long, so a lot of killifish, you know, they'll live about a year. So uh, just be prepared for that. But if you do have a healthy uh, group of them and they are spawning, then you'll kind of continue that on. Tyreen, what do you think about uh, surface dwelling nano fish? What are your favorite? I think you're right. Most of the fish that dwell at the top, they tend to be jumpers. So you definitely want to have a tight fitting lid. And this is going to be true for my favorite pick, which is the marbled hatchet fish. I just think it's a good combination of not only a fish that mostly stays in the upper third of the aquarium, but it's a very odd looking fish and I love oddballs. So I remember when I first got them, I thought they were like little angels. But again, you have to be very careful Careful because they are very prone to jumping out of the aquarium. You want to feed them a lot of floating small foods because they have very small mouths. And again, since they're mostly hanging out on the surface, they would probably feel most comfortable not only in a big school of their own kind, but also if you have a lot of floating plants up there that they kind of hide behind and get some shade underneath. So definitely try them out. I've actually never kept them before. And every time I see them, I'm like, oh, I want those. It just, I don't have the right setup for them quite yet. Great, great choice. I, I think they are prone to ick. So definitely make sure that you have ick x on hand because that's definitely something I've seen a lot. You want to definitely quarantine them and give them those meds. 
So the next nano fish on our list is our favorite nano algae eater. Irene, I think I have a couple ideas, so but I wanna hear yours first. What's your favorite nano algae eater? I'm gonna go ahead and steal a mono shrimp just because they're just like workhorses. <laughs> yeah, they're not exactly the prettiest algae eater out there just because they are kind of mostly clear looking, but I personally really like shrimp. I like their little shrimpy movements, how their legs are always moving and picking at algae and other debris around in the aquarium. And uh, they get a little bit larger than like cherry shrimp. So then you can kind of put them with slightly bigger fish that won't necessarily eat them. I find that they're very voracious eaters. So if you really want, I mean, they'll even attack blackbeard algae, but in those cases, you will have to kind of starve them a little bit, not feed a lot of food into the tank, and they'll just go after anything that's available to them. So definitely try a mono shrimp. They're awesome. I love a mono shrimp. I keep them in a lot of aquariums and I even keep them in brackish tanks because they do have the ability to uh, live in that saltier environment. Mm -hmm. So great choice. For me, I'm gonna go a different route, even though a mono shrimp is high on the list and I'm gonna go with a hillstream loach. Now, hillstream loach is kind of almost like an oddball fish and people don't always, uh, they're not very familiar with them, but they're a fun kind of cooler water algae eating fish that they'll spawn in tanks. If you have like lots of rocks, you can get groups of them. I remember when Corey had his 800 gallon, we, there was a bunch spawning in there. And I actually have one that was gifted to me by my daughter's friend who's a fan of uh, our channels. But um, yeah, Hillstream Loach is uh, one of my favorite nano algae eaters. Yeah, I love the mini stingray look. Like they look really, really weird. What would you say is like, I don't know, the, the minimum tank size it could fit in? Minimum tank size for a, a Hillstream Loach is probably 10 to 15 gallons. It just, it just really depends on kind of the decor and do you have enough for them to eat. I would definitely make sure that if you are keeping them, like any other fish, even if you have an algae fish that's you know predominantly eating algae, you still wanna make sure that you're feeding them, targeting them. They are gonna want some proteins every now and then, so make sure that you're dropping wafers or rapashi or something else in there that's good for them to eat. But uh, yeah, I think uh, you know even like a 10 or 15 gallon, they would be just fine. Okay, we've kind of covered the bottom of the tank, the top of the tank, some algae eaters. What about kind of midwater schooling fish? Uh, I think just the classic nano schooling fish would be chili resporas. I just owned some recently and they get so fiery red. Like I love how beautiful they are. with their little black markings on the middle and very active. I don't really find, you know, a lot of nano fish because they are smaller, they're constantly looking out for predators and they can be pretty shy. I liked how the chili resporas didn't seem to hide from me even when I was, you know, looming my face really close to the glass. They would always come up and be like, are you gonna feed me? They were very excited and so beautiful against the green background of a nano planted tank. Absolutely highly recommend them. Worth it. When you see them at the fish store, they're definitely going to be paler and smaller. So you may think, what's the big deal? But take them home. It may take three months, six months, raise them up, and you will see that gorgeous, gorgeous red color. Yeah, chili resboras are great. Uh, they were actually high on my list too, very colorful. But I'm going to go in a different color spectrum and I'm going to go with the green neon tetra. Oh. Now the green neon tetra, not as common as the regular neon tetra, but they've got this brilliant kind of bluish green color to them and they look really good under the right lighting and in a planet tank. They're a little bit smaller than regular neon tetra so I think they're a great kind of community schooling fish that you could have in your nano aquarium. Um, easy to feed, easy to care for, pretty easy to find if you ask around and just a fun fish. I love how even when the lighting is dim and it's in the evening, you can see that crazy bright blue stripe kind of floating around in the aquarium. It's like amazing, very, very colorful. So the next fish on my list, we're gonna be talking about centerpiece fish. So this is a little bit more difficult when you're talking about a fish that's gonna be a centerpiece fish in a nano aquarium. Now, a lot of times with a centerpiece fish, you're looking for something larger, colorful, but we are trying to stay in that nano range. So I'm gonna go super nano, and I'm gonna go with a dwarf pea puffer. They can be a little bit territorial towards one another. So if you do have a nano tank that's five or 10 gallons and it's not super densely planted. If you have one alone along with some other schooling fish that aren't puffers, um, they'll do just fine. They are carnivores though, so you are gonna wanna make sure that you're you know, feeding them the appropriate, appropriate foods. Uh, besides them being a little bit more challenging to feed, they're really fun, cool little fish and great for even the smallest of nano tanks. Irene, what about you? I kinda have an idea of what you're gonna say for <laughs> centerpiece fish, but I wanna hear it. 
You know me, I am a garami lover, and so one of the smaller, more peaceful garamis is the honey garami. The bright yellow color, kind of floating around like a little blimp with those two really long ventral fins is just so gorgeous in my mind. They're very, very peaceful. Some of the bigger garamis can sometimes be a little feisty, even dwarf garamis, versus the honey garami, I've never really seen any aggression. They're just kind of perfect little community school, uh, community tank members. So feed them kind of the same foods that you would a betta fish. A lot of them, you know, they are also anabantoids where they have that capability to gulp air directly from the surface. And so you see a lot of them hanging around on the top, but I actually saw them kind of hanging around everywhere in the aquarium, even in the bottom next to my Corydoras. So very, very friendly fish. I would highly recommend. They're kind of curious. Yes. So they'll kind of like, you know, swim around the tank and explore. And when they put out their little feeler fins, it's kind of, it is kind of cool to watch. I know some people think that they should be kept in schools, but I've definitely had cases where I actually had like a group of them. They didn't really seem to quote school together. They actually all kind of separately explored different areas of the tank. And then even in quarantine, I had some females together and they were actually kind of bullying each other a little bit. So it's, I would not say honey garami is gonna be particularly lonely if you have to keep one by itself as a centerpiece. So the next thing on our list is our favorite nano invertebrates. And I'm gonna kick this off with one of my favorite and something that I keep in a lot of different tanks for a few different reasons, and that's a nerite snail. Lots of different color variations, um, and they are excellent at uh, cleaning algae and cleaning anything in your aquarium. The one downside is that uh, sometimes you'll get a, a nerite snail, usually a female obviously, that's gonna lay eggs. When you get a nerite snail that's laying eggs, you'll get these little small white dots that are laid on hard surfaces in the aquarium. So that could be on the glass, it could be on decoration, sometimes you'll see it on plants. Um, the good thing though, is that if you don't want a bunch of snails in your aquarium, uh, nearite snails do not uh, spawn in fresh water. They actually need brackish and salt water for the full life cycle of the, uh, the hatched um, uh, nearite snails. I like them because they're very hardy and they also go in brackish water. Because I like to keep fresh water and brackish water tanks, I can, you know, pick and choose where they go and they do fine in all those systems. So nearite snails, one of my favorites, I probably have them in at, at least 60 or 70% of my aquariums and they're just fun to have. Do you find that you have to feed them special foods or anything? Because once all the algae is gone in the aquarium, you know, they have to eat something, right? I have not found that I've had to target feed them. Um, generally in my aquariums, because I like to keep them a little bit more natural looking, and by natural I mean a little dirtier, so there's <laughs> always algae and some detritus in there. Obviously I have lots of fish, so there's gonna be leftover food here and there. So I've never had a situation where I've had to target feed a nearite snail, and I would never put them like in a brand new tank. I always make sure that the tank is established, that it's, you know, seasoned and has, you know, kind of grown some, some microfauna and algae on different surfaces. And I found that they're just fine cruising around and scrubbing the surfaces of the tank and not having to feed them directly. Uh, my recommendation for best nano invertebrate is definitely cherry shrimp. Especially since I have harder water, it's not as easy for me to keep crystal shrimp, which need kind of the softer water, lower pH. But neocardina shrimp, they come in all sorts of colors. Some people say, you know, if you mix them together, it's like a Skittles tank, because there's almost every, every color of the rainbow is represented. And plus, they breed very readily. So that's kind of nice because they're in high, high demand. Not only are they super gorgeous, but like uh, nerite snails, they're also pretty good at cleaning up algae and other detritus in the aquarium. So when you breed a bunch of them, you don't have to worry about what to do with the extra shrimp because most local fish stores or your local aquarium society will be happy to take them. They seem to go for pretty high prices, at least when I've seen in my local area. I've actually fallen in love with them recently because I've had some challenges keeping them in the past, but uh, for whatever reason, I set up a tank uh, last year and they are doing phenomenal. I've got little baby shrimpettes or shrimplets or whatever, they're swimming all over. I've got multiple generations. I probably at this point in time have over a hundred of them in, in one of my 40 gallon tanks. So they are a very fun invertebrate to keep. Okay, why don't we round out our last category with favorite nano oddball fish. I'm gonna let you go first, Senso. What do you think? Those of you that uh, know the fish that I keep, I do love oddball fish. A lot of my oddballs are a little bit larger, so 
for Nano, the Bumblebee Goby. Um, they stay very small, usually an inch or less in size. Um, easy to feed, they are carnivorous, but they will take to you know, dry flake foods, nano pellets, uh, live foods obviously, frozen foods, so very easy to feed. I keep them actually in a brackish tank. I love them and uh, I just see myself always wanting to have bumblebees in one of my aquariums. See, it wouldn't be a Zenzo video if you didn't mention brackish fish. <laughs> I love that, which I'm also glad very, that you very said true. bumblebee gobies because that means you didn't take my answer. And I'm gonna vote for coolie loaches. I really like them because they're just basically squirmy little danger noodles. They look like miniature eels or snakes. And they too also have that kind of vertical banding zebra kind of pattern, but they're just a very, very hardy. They are scavengers. They mostly feed off the bottom of the tank. And um, they do have a more nocturnal lifestyle. So they'll definitely be more active kind of at dusk or when the light kind of goes down in your aquarium. But for me personally, I haven't found them to be that shy. Mine will come up, you know, if I put Rapashi gel food or some of their favorite foods down in front, they're right up there with everybody else. And they're not bothered by, even if my dwarf Garami, the tank boss tries to get at them, they don't care at all. They're, they're right up there. So I really like seeing them. Uh, I had given them away recently. And then my son was like, why did you give away the Kaliloches? So I got some more just for him, but very, very cute. Let us know what your favorite nano fish were and who you agreed with more, me or Zenzo. And also, if you're curious with what nano fish Corey likes, he's got a top 10 nano fish video over here that you gotta check out.